I am honoured to be delivering this peace lecture in spoken word alongside a long time friend and music collaborator of some 17 years, Alphonse Dordet Turner. My literary activism of 20 years in Bristol takes on many forms, whether this is through pavement chalking, a play, spoken word, an essay, or social commentary. It's from the margins, as this is invariably where the black artist is. Our paid work is unreliable. As I grow old, I ponder the disappearance into obscurity, the truth of our black African ancestors' endeavours, struggles, achievements. Are they to remain forever obscured, ignored and marginalised? All my writing is an archival journey into making sense of the world and her spaces locally, nationally and globally. To render visible the lives of the invisible black woman, man and lowly other, past and present. Confidence in my writing voice and creative output has been developed in Bristol Black Writing Groups, enabling the raising of performance events and readings to speak our truth to disproportionality, this over-representation of black men in mental health statistics, prison statistics, incidents of police stop and, stop and search, dying violently at the hands of police, deaths in custody or in asylum detention centres. Lies blighted before their time. Does this always have to be so? There are two people I wish to remember at this time. The indomitable spirit of my late mother, Leomi Martin, who died on the 2nd of October last year at a great age of 98. She was one of the Windrush generation, coming to London, UK, from St Lucia in 1958. In London, she meets aged 38, travelling alone by ship. In London, she meets our Lagosian father, a university student. My mother had many sayings, one which I recall when we were children. Peace is a glorious thing. I shall come back to her. I should also like to remember at this time fellow Southwest black writer David Onamade. I only became aware of his recent passing when I stumbled across a publication of his at Bookhouse Bookshop. Moved by this volume of poetry, sorrow, tears and blood. This is about homelessness and I hadn't realised until I opened up the publication how personal it was and that he had spent ten years homeless on the streets of Bath. I asked myself, what do you have to be reduced to to qualify for housing? This book is a powerful testimony to social exclusion. David and I were fellow contributors in a 1998 slim anthology of Bristol Black Writers Group publication, The Reality Is. This group was my salvation soon after arriving in Bristol. We would come together, share work in a safe place, receive encouragement and give mutual support in our literary endeavours. Our writing was to begin to heal our wounded selves. We'd put on performances. Of the 16 contributors in that slim volley, sadly, five of us have died. Peace is a glorious thing, my mother would say. But I now realise this would have only been an aspiration, for when I look back at her mother's life at the time, it was part far from peaceful. My father was away in Scotland studying, and we, five children, and my mother lived in two rooms in a multi-occupied house in Kentish Town. 
Kentish Town, the early 1960s, was not the uber-trendy Kentish Town it is today. Run down, it was the United Nations of recently arrived migrants, largely living cheap by jowl. No bath, a cooker on the landing, we children bathed in a galvanised tub, and our mother would go to the Prince of Wales public baths with her girlfriends. An outing, a regular outing she relished, for every Monday was women's hanging out time at the great two-listed Victorian public wash house. They would bath, do their weekly laundry there, have lunch while the smallest of us children was in the crush. And the day ended picking up the older ones from school. Our mother was one of those endlessly creative, resourceful beings, making a family clothes from scraps of cloth from the market, she being a trained seamstress. She also cooked fantastic meals from butchers and fishmongers' throwaway bones. Her life was not without hardship and worries. Whilst remembering the camaraderie of those early days, she took great pains to recollect how low a point she reached when she wanted to end her life but was able through faith to pull herself back from the abyss of despair. You have to remember how one could very nearly not be alive to experience the good times. We black writers and artists scrape from the margins in resistance. We raise our voices to affirm and celebrate our ancestors' elders and our own ongoing presence, present-day struggles, our adaptation to survive and rich contribution to multicultural Britain in arts, in music, in food and dance and in creative resistance, in raising rituals of renewal and healing, evoking ancestral spirits to guide us. Creativity for me is a journey of trust into the unknown. When it is going well, it's an urge that feels quite instinctive working alongside artist colleagues with trust and listening keenly, being attuned to that still, small voice. I'm going to move on now to the performance readings, weaving threads of past and present injustice in Bristol and its surroundings as witness to truth in the struggle for social justice. Transportation, new territory to occupy, liberty, freedom, a whim, magical realism, soaring over land, space, 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 a prey, mine, 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 manna or be preyed upon. Did you have to hide? Pretend? Be duplicious? Eagle swooping? Hornet's nest? Shrinking? Invisible? Hornet's nest? Living ghost. Shaming. Oh God help me. A song. Sing me one. Let it out. Humming. Drumming. A tonic. Lift me up. Wordless. Muted. Yet still singing. Only silently. Oil Spillbird When an oil spill clogs your wings, plastic chokes your system, poison hems you in, weakened, trembling, do you still fly, wade or sink? Red bird, brown bird, little bird, fat bird, black bird, bird of prey, scavenge everywhere. Tiny chick chirping, big thrush hopping, two-tone bird homing, hummingbird hovering, toucan bird feeding, parrot squawking, Hispaniolan trogon, Priotelus rosigaster, Haitian bird of the tropical rainforest, little red trouser bird. Now you see me, now you don't. Is this inevitable, I ask myself, the disappearance of lives, histories, cultures, of those of us of African heritage, much like the disappearance of the little red trouser bird? 
I bring you forth to pronounce your name and presence in this city. Joan Smith, 1603, being a blackable, buried St. Philip, St. St. Jacob's. Mary, 6 of the 9, 1697, base child of Sarah, a Negro. Black child. The black woman's child from the Lincolns. Black woman, buried 29th of the 8th, 1733. Judith, Negro woman, 17th and 5th, 1732. Aged about 50 years, baptized St. Mary's Redcliffe. Christina Black, 15th of the 2nd, 1725. Maid servant to Mr. Thomas Whitchurch. Baptized Temple Church. Black girl. Mary Millwood, 10th of the 4th, 1744, a mulatto, 28 years old, baptised St. Stephen's. Mary Smith, 19th of 11, 1798. Here, in this place, at this time, black Bristolians of the 17th and 18th centuries, living in the mist of Bristol's transatlantic slavery in humanity. Black brother dies prematurely in Bristol. It is 2004. His death is brought to my attention by the family. It's untimely, unremarked, and represents for me all those marginalised, vulnerable, without a voice, overrepresented black men, women, young people, in mental health facilities and statistics in this city, elsewhere. I have created a voice for the cemetery in memory of Vernon Hawthorne, a requiem for our times, Killing Me Softly, by Ros Martin. I don't need a camera, a microphone, six o'clock news bulletin, nor local news headline. I go softly, gently, into the night. In this place of safety, I voluntarily stepped inside. Being out there on my own scares me. Will you sit with me? Hold my hand, let me cry throughout the night. Those voices that come at me, they scare me all right. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be so needy. Disquieting you with my distress, and look at you. Loads to do, not enough staff on again. It's not right. Thank you, doctor. I'll take them, these tablets, new ones, you say. They will keep the voices at the bay. You don't want to risk my distress. You're the one that knows best. Thank you so very much for thinking about me with your ever wide open doors. You keep them away. My family, they're part of the problem, you see. Only, you just go check your files and remind me who I am. It's all written down there, so please tell me who I am. This insanity, it terrorises me inside, outside my head, morning, noon, night. Why I can see me in your eyes, an act wielding madman? I'll never cut anyone. Just me, me, me. I shouldn't upset myself no more. How right you are, doctor, saving me from me. So kind of you to understand. You do think about me. Ooh, soft, woozy, dreamy, 
this blanket that's coming at me. Yes, this treatment plan is yet the best thing for me. Only a little stomach upset and diarrhea. I make myself a cup of tea. Then I fall asleep. Such a deep and comforting sleep. Woo! I see your safety coming at me. The best that's ever been. No need to check up on me. In this place of safety. To the next of kin, we regret to inform you. Vernon Hawthorne died in his sleep. Natural causes. Rest assured, he passed away ever so gently. He wouldn't have felt a peep. Is there anything we can do to help? If it were some ordinary admissions ward, in a general hospital, say, a little murmuring might go astray. That bed that lies empty, visiting relatives of others, might inquire, what happened to him? Quite chap. Heart attack? I'm sorry. He looked so very well. In this place of safety, one voluntary steps inside. There's no need for a camera, microphone, six o'clock news bulletin, or local news headline. Without glare, with no formality, so softly, so gently, so unobtrusively, we go into the night. Killing me softly. Rest in peace, Vernon Hawthorne, 5 11 62 27 01 2004. Thank you. Someplace, somewhere, you are lying there dead. Who are you? Where are you from? Why are you lying there dead? Bullet ridden, who cares? Some place, somewhere, you are dead to all. This is a place I come to when it all gets too much. The art of resistance is to pause, breathe, start again. It's a kind of freeing up, letting go. Here there are no demands made upon me. I can just be in this place. I empty up my mind. Immerse myself into my surroundings to replenish my spirit. For this is a place by the river phone, my hateney bridge, the water's edge. I meditate, I contemplate, I remember. I stretch out my arms. Stretch my legs, scratch my head, give my brains a spring clean, breathe in deeply, to regulate my breathing so it's not thumping out of my chest. I listen, birdsong, immerse myself into my surroundings, water that magical fluid that surrounds my grandchild to be. Only she's been out 10 months now. I ponder what the future holds for little ones like her. What do we bequeath them 
at this time. I watch children play and trouble by relentless rain, water. I shelter under the canopy of leaves of a tree. How different this place looks when it rains. Peace is a glorious thing. I am here because they were there, my late Sanusian mother in the Caribbean and Nigerian father in Lagos, I remember. Water carries us places. I am here because they were there. Water gives us memories of theirs in 1950s, 1960s, North London. It is by the water's edge I contemplate the fragility of life. It's danger, how precious water is. She sustains, she destroys. Water is our universe. I observe her in the oceans over time carrying goods, services, people, dreams, dreams, dreams. And all those dared before their time, working in grime of the Industrial Revolution, Victorian working lies down mines. I bring them up to remember, men and children, in pits surrounding East Bristol, South Bristol, and South Gloucestershire, courtesy of Doreen Lindergaard, killed in a coal pit. You work. You work, you work until you drop. You work, you work, you work until you drop. William Wolfenden, aged 21, grey and coast pit, crushed to death by a large stone, night for the 3rd, 1861. Thomas Woodbridge, D Lane Pit, Collier, killed by an explosion, the 4th of the 4th, 1875. James Willing, age 36, West Street, married, five children. William Payne, age 26, West Street, widower, three small children. John Smith, age 56, North Street, widower with a family. William Parker, age 16, all killed by an explosion in Toad Fane, at South Liberty Pit, 1875. You work extreme narrow cold seams. It's difficult for men to ne negotiate. Boys are preferred. You work, you work, you work until you drop. You work, you work. You work a tub of coal pulled on rails, harnessed as a beast of burden. A chain around your waist passes through your legs. You work, you work, you work until you drop. Like a horse, necks are very tender when first broken to the collar. Age seven, you've already worked a year in Eastern Pit, the youngest miner ever recorded. You work, you work, you work until you drop. Abraham Bailey, age 13, falls from a trip to the bottom of Soundwell Pit, 2nd of the 2nd, 1795. Daniel Bennett, age 14, son of John Bennett, coal miner. Daniel Bennett, age 12, falls off an ascending coal cart, son of George Bennett, Coal miner drowned in Soundwell Pit Reservoir. You work, you work, you work until you drop. Isaac Burgess, age 13, coal miner of St George, died 
dies falling down Reuben's pit, 6th of the 10th, 1855. Baby Bryant, a newborn male child, found dead and secreted in a deep mine hole, in a sack at the parish of Dayton, 12 hours after birth. Wick and Abson, 4th of the 7th, 1813. Thomas Birch falls into a coal pit, Mangelsfield, 12th of the 11th, 1744. Thomas Black, age 15, coal miner killed, falling from the Langway at Castle and Co's pit. You work, you work, you work until you drop. You work, you work, you work until you drop. In memoriam. you wanted to be? Who made your dreams dreamless and dull, snatching the sparkle from once bright eyes? Who made you feel like you never amount to anything? Who made you feel this way? Who unsprung your once sprung step, shrouding you within limitless possibilities of hopelessness, encircling a rageous smile of dull, claustrophobic streets. He pointed out to you your unloveliness. He never held you and loved you up freely. Did no one ever make you feel this way? Who shrunk and diminished your worth, making you doubt you as the self of worth, taking second best, taking nothing because that's what you now believe. Who made you feel untrusting, suspicious, unlovely, lonely, clutching ignoble indignity like you don't care no more? The gaping wounds of countless wrongs fester, a bitter gall rage lacerates self hate, inwards you hurt, a spirit in need of poultices, deep healing from within. Whoever it was, whatever it was, lay it aside, leave all behind. Concentrate on you, nurturing you. Be around people that can shore you up, love you up, help you to cry all the cries you need to cry, to wash yourself anew. Unblink your eyes. Now open them wide with a spirit that's reawakened, raise that head where it belongs, above those clouds. Pump that chest out and breathe again freely. Breathe in, breathe long, breathe out freely. Breathe in the new you and dream, dream. Go on dream, you can be whatever you want to be. We are all in this business of peace building together, in this Atlantic Triangle. What a work in progress, an ever-evolving sculpture with many hands at play. What is it to be? This is a story of adaptation and survival. Well, some of us do. In this Atlantic Triangle, we encounter the restlessness, spirits of ancestors. We are learning to dig deep, to reach out, to understand, to care. And allyship 
in acts of self-love. In this Atlantic triangle, creativity in adversity is ours, in remembrance that we are one, and it is our common humanity that we are all striving for. palm of our hands into yours, bunches of us, freely we are packed to be shipped abroad, boxes and boxes, so many of us come this way, cheap, sweet, short lived, must like us, that's all I can say, greedy hands, delighting and unraveling our softness, creamy, mushy and palpable insides when paired open wide so pleasing our skins will be abandoned anywhere only see how brown and ruinous quickly we become there be lies our lies rich sweet ripe pickings so easily we pass around the world unregistering flights Prayed upon, dollar a day lies, ours, marking time, ours, ruled by five Chiquita del Monte Dole's plantation bananas, destined to dominate supermarket shelves, yourselves, cheapening all our lives, our bananas flying off shelves cost us, infertility, leukemia, from pesticide sprays and our protestations met only with intimidation of our unionization. Now you know it's all down to you. The gift. Calloused hands did readily reach out in a tight, holding embrace, bearing me upright, bidding me always to stand tall. The bruises and hurts soothed, that unyielding terrain I did never see, so wholly I had absorbed this birthright of mine. How keenly did I then feel ground shift from underneath me, I stumbled and fell often. Let the tears flow freely, you'd say. Discharge all hurts, disappointments openly. Do not let them fester like a canker sore. Breaking into spontaneous, heartfelt song and laughter, you reverberated a love of life in spite of it all. Forfeiting your dream, you did undertake menial travels for me so that I might dream, instilling the while a love of self, an education of self, a belief in self none can take away. We are only here on earth for a short time, we can either add to humanity in witness or take away from it, consciously or unconsciously. We need to keep dreaming and encourage those with love, care and tenderness who are feeling hopeless. Let them dream again. We need to create and have a creative approach to life's problems share talents, foster resilience in ourselves and others. Self-care is important. George Floyd's brutal murder teaches us if we are bystanders in the midst of ongoing inequalities and injustices, then we are indeed part of the problem. 
Our struggle for peace is informed by the values and actions we demonstrate. Peace is a glorious thing, oh yes. But there cannot be peace without truth or justice. Let our example in witness be one striving for truth, peace and justice. Just for now, let words wash over you. Let music soothe, heal, comfort, arrest the troubled mind, the ambiguous smile lines. Come, replace furrowed, careworn, worry lines. Bills, food, rent, gas, school trips to pay for. No rainy days, monies stashed away to play. Just red letters, they're unopened envelopes you hide behind the mantelpiece clock as it tick tops, tick tops. Will this be forever? Just for now, let hips sway gently, banish world weariness, let feet lighten, jerk limbs to drum beats. Let the music elevate, pulsate, sweat in abandon. What cares? Just for now, let all cares be vanquished. So far away. Dreams, for if dreams die.